And after the war started, three independent commissions examined all of these claims, talked to the analysts who had provided the president with those uh, Right. opinions and they were told there was no pressure brought on them they actually just got it wrong that I think Stuart ought to trouble Americans just as much as the notion that anyone lied true but that's what you reported right. you reported accurately what these people were right. saying that's right accurately what information was going to the president and why he did what he did exactly you were accurate yes. you were honest yes and it wasn't but just me it was the entire New York Times and just about every paper in the country See, that's what I don't understand. All right, we are privileged to be joined in studio. As many times as I've talked to her over the years, this is the first time I've actually met Judith Miller, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, uh, adjunct fellow at Manhattan Institute, author of a brand new one. There it is on your screen, The Story, A Reporter's Journey. Of course, former New York Times reporter. Great to see Great you. Great to see and you And I put the last. lotion all over my hands. I'm all moisturized. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Why is it? that they pick on you. Why is it that Judith Miller uh, led us into war? <laughs> Judith Miller lied. Judith Miller did this. Were you the only person writing about weapons of mass destruction and what the, and, and what the intelligence community was reporting? Why you? <laughs> That's a question I often ask myself. It's a question my husband asked. Why you? Well, maybe because I worked at the New York Times, which was you know the nation's most prominent newspaper back then. Maybe it's because I was a woman uh, they didn't ask, you know, they didn't uh, talk about the stories that I co-wrote with many of my male colleagues. Maybe just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I, I have no idea, really. I mean, I'm a pushy reporter. I probably stepped on toes. If you're a man, they say you're an aggressive reporter and there's a positive connotation. I don't know. It I is what it usually is. I would, I would bite the head off of any, any right. woman or person who <laughs> says that, but... Uh, let, let, let's say that, but, but I, you know, I, I just always, ever since the book came out and ever since this latest round of, of taking you to task, I've been saying to myself, I said, why are they picking on her? I really don't get it. I really don't get it. All right. I, I, here's, what, here's my deal. Um, didn't we find out just a few, like a year ago, didn't the Washington Post and the New York, the Times, New York Times do stories saying that there were weapons of mass destruction, that soldiers got hurt uh, and suffered the ill effects of uncovering these chemical weapons, these older chemical weapons, am I wrong? Uh, you're not wrong. Uh, they were there, but these were not the weapons we went to war for, which is what readers of the New York Times read. Um, that's correct in that these were old munitions that were made before the 1991 Iraq right. War. However, the failure to account for the destruction of these weapons, the fact that Saddam claimed they had been destroyed and that they're still very much with right. us, would suggest that he had not been forthright, he was not honest with the UN when he said he destroyed them. And that was one of the justifications, Steve, for war, wasn't cited by Hans, President Bush. Wasn't it Hans Blix who said, we, we don't, he will not tell us how he got rid of them, when he got rid of them, what, uh, he will not account for any of them. And didn't he actually say, so therefore we must assume he has them? I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Your memory is almost perfect. Okay. He said, we can't equate the absence of evidence of their existence with their existence. Okay. But what Hans Blix wanted was more time to look for them. Wow. But he did give the UN Security Council an absolute determination that Iraq was not in compliance with the, its UN undertakings. And it was that declaration that boosted the case for war. 17 UN uh, resolutions. Right. Obama went to the United Nations twice right. begging begging Saddam Hussein open up let the inspectors in please 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 Even Bush Bush went President Bush went yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean it's not mm -hmm. like he, he just said oh look we have this intelligence report boom bam right. boom he, he mm -hmm. tried to avoid war did he not yes and eventually Saddam did let the inspectors in and they did comprehensive inspections they did a lot of lot of very good work that we reported right but they still were hiding or didn't know what had happened to some of the material that they claimed to have destroyed. And that's not being in compliance. Um, Valerie Plain, that whole incident was just a, a mockery, wasn't it? It's really a shocking incident when you look at it in retrospect. I mean, when you realize that the entire country was riveted on this story, which turned out to be a non-story, right. a non-crime, in which no one, with which no one was ever charged. She wasn't even a, a covert agent, well, was she? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. The CIA says she met the okay. definition. She says she was a right. covert agent. 
uh, there were many people who worked with her and said she wasn't. All right, we're coming back with more from Judith Miller. Don't go away. All right, folks, we're back with uh, Judith Miller, the new book, The Story, A Reporter's Journey. And um, right, let me ask you, what, what do you think of journalism today? I mean, if, uh, to me, if we had true journalism, unbiased journalism, there's no way on the face of the earth Hillary Clinton could run for president. Do you agree? <laughs> Look, the press has had a very complicated relationship with Hillary, a kind of a love-hate relationship. When they're not loving her, they hate her. The best right-wing conspiracy. Yeah. But, you know, it was Jeff Gerth of the New York Times who did the first Whitewater story and got pilloried for that story, even though the story itself held up very, very well. So I think what we need today is less opinion and more digging, more fact, more investigative journalism. Yet that, as you know, is the most expensive form of journalism to do, and very few news organizations want to invest in that all today. Right. But, but, you know, th it was all there for Barack Obama as a talk radio uh, uh, personality at the time. Um, I knew things about Barack Obama that, that never got reported. I mean, th they didn't look into it. I mean, that, and how about Joe Biden? How could a man who says uh, Obama's the first clean African-American and articulate African-American ever to run, also says education is better in Iowa than in D.C. because you have less minorities in Iowa, and says the 7-Eleven crap. How does he get to be vice president? And every time he says something like that, it's, oh, ha, ha, crazy Joe. But if you say Makaka and you're a Republican, you're a racist and you're out. I mean, that's, the, that's how we work in this country. Look, there's a double standard, clearly, for uh, Democrats and Republicans. I think it's very obvious that most of our colleagues in the media are left of center, and they do hold Democrats to a different standard than Republicans, and th people see it. They understand that. And I just think that journalism would be better off if people acknowledge their biases rather than try to do, you know, what I was trying to do all these years is to say I'm an objective reporter even though I have personal views. I, I think it's better if we just talk about what they are and then people would know what they're getting. <laughs> yeah, I bet it's so well. I mean, you know what you're getting if you watch MSNBC. You know what you're getting right. if you watch me to a great extent. I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to be down the middle. Let's, let's talk a little bit about this Middle East policy right mm -hmm. now. Um, uh, well, Fred, let's go back to Hillary for a second. Uh, I mean, th do the emails bother you? Does all that bother you? Do we need investigative journalism to look into this? How about the Clinton Foundation, the donations, the, the alleged uh, influence? I won't say peddling, but she changed her mind on this Colombian deal after a big donation. I mean, all that stinks to high heaven, does it not? I think all of these things need to be investigated seriously and in a sustained way, not episodically, not when she announces for president. Right. They haven't been, but they're going to be now, I think. I hope. <laughs> that may be that may be just a, and just as uh, Jeb Bush's money and funding should be everyone's money, the source of the money should be public record. I don't care how much you give. I want to know who's giving it and what they think they're getting for yeah, it. The, and her own emails are in public record. I mean, as, as that, says Secretary of State. That is outrageous. You cannot be the person who keeps the records and then also decides what's in the public interest right, so and agreed, what's public record. Uh, agreed if this was a Republican. Oh. That there was no way they would be allowed to run for president. When I say allowed, I mean the media would would, would, would go after them with, with like with a, a knife, right? Well, I think they'd be allowed to run for president. Well, you know what I, mean, I but think the media they'd be would criticized. try to destroy them. They'd be criticized yeah. for it, just as she has been. You have to acknowledge, Steve. Now to that an extent, she has she has been, and I'm not sure that this is over yet. It, I hope it's not over. I think Trey Gowdy is going to subpoena that server. He's going to meet with her first privately. But I think this story is not over. We learned for Lois from Lois learner supposedly that emails are never destroyed yeah, but, let's find but out Hillary, whether or not Hillary it's assured her she had the server with a 24-hour guard <laughs> as if someone was going to come and take the server as opposed to hack the server she's technically astute um, Middle East is Middle everything East. that ha that has happened to the Middle East under Obama it's it's got to be on purpose Judith it's got it's not an accident no. it's it's the, the terrorists and the Muslim Brotherhood always win always wind up on top and Isis we're leaving them alone that's not an accident no, uh, I have been fortunate to be able to cover Egypt yes, over this you period. Were chief here and too. That, that's right. And for, you know, 30 years it was the first Arab country I ever went to, and I've got to tell you, that country now has 
has walked back from the precipice of being under yeah. Muslim Brotherhood yeah. control and then having itself Thank its soul destroyed. Yeah. However, you, we've got to hold their feet to the fire on human rights. The other day, they just arrested another journalist. Arresting journalists is not good no, no, policy, yeah. and it's not and good PR. And sending them to jail is even but, worse. Yes. But look at the mess that is the Middle East. That's what I want to get to. That's, that's the purpose? story right now. No, 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 no. No? I, no. I think that Barack Obama thought that he was changing and reversing the ill-conceived policies of his predecessor. It turns out, I think, that Barack Obama has learned that the Middle East is a lot more complicated than he understood. Yeah, I think he's finding out all things are a lot more complicated <laughs> all the way around, unfortunately, uh, both the Middle East and us were the sufferers. Hey, here it is, folks, the story. I'm going to hold it up to show you that I got my copy as well. Now, it's on screen, I know, but I like holding it up even better. Uh, great to see you. Thank you. Great Best of to luck see with you. the book. And, uh, you, know, uh, I, you know, whenever you could come <laughs> back, maybe when it's paperback, right. come on back. <laughs> well, We'd love to reviewers see you. said there was lots of sex, martinis, and adventure. Sex, <laughs> sex, get the fuck, sex. Uh, all right, folks, we're coming back with Alan Dershowitz. Don't go away.